Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we're at Formnext in Germany. We're taking a look at some of the latest and greatest tech in 3D printing. We're talking with some new partners, some old partners, and we're going to chop this up into lots of different videos so that we can try to cover as much as humanly possible. But first of all, let's play a game of jacket, no jacket, because sometimes I'm going to be hot and sometimes I'm not. And it's going to make it really difficult from an editing perspective. <laughs> Let's get in there. Hello guys and dolls, we are with Solidator and we are taking a look at this absolute beast of a machine. So, let's talk about Solidator as a company to start with. So who are you, where did you come from? Yeah, <laughs> so my name is Tim Fisher, we are Solidator team. Uh, we did a Kickstarter back in 2013, maybe you remember that, where we have the fastest printer in the world. We are printing like eight, uh, six Eiffel Towers on this back big platform in record time, but was six hours at that time. Uh, right after that, Formlab started and Carbon started their businesses yep. as well, and it was incredible. Now we did these things again every three years, and now we have a resolution of 43 micron X and Y and a vertical output of 9,157 cubic inch per hour. So that means you get those autodenses in 22 minutes. That's so, let, hold on. What, you get that full build play in 22 minutes? Yeah, per piece, yeah. Per piece, 22 minutes, right. That whole thing, 22 minutes? That's two, two hours for everything, so it's 22 minutes per part. That's correct. Right. Still? Two hours. That, that, that's, okay. That's still insane. Okay, right, fine. So let, let, let's talk about the secret sauce, right? So what is it that's making this as, as insanely quick as it is? Because when you look inside of this machine, which we'll do in a minute, but when you look inside of this machine, it looks completely different from other machines on the market. It's still MSLA, and that is fairly obvious, but everything else you've done completely differently. So, <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about sort of the secret source of what makes this special. Yeah, so in 2013 we did our patterns for the release stuff. We have uh, all these motors since 10 years. We have the same setup for the mechanics and we have started building our own materials way back in 2010 and improved them over and over again to have the highest speed. So basically we have our own materials. It's a closed system. They work perfectly on this machine. We've increased light intensity by eight times compared to the previous machine and get these incredible speeds. So at, th at that speed, you're reaching the chemical limitation of, of, of the material, right? Yeah. Because the sheer, the, the exothermic reaction and everything, the heat that that must produce. Yes. Like, you, you know, normally when you're dealing with, with MSLA, the, the main heat you have to get rid of is the heat from the UV light source. You just put a big heat sink on the bottom and some fans, it's a bit noisy. But what you're dealing with here is heat everywhere, all yeah. at once. On <laughs> the heat of the resin, you need to have the right resins not getting too hot to yeah. the cure, though you have only limited time. So this is really special materials. So let, let, let's take a look inside the machine and we'll go over and take a look at that one and take a look at what makes this just as special as it is. So what we're dealing with here is, is a Swedish piece of furniture if it was at the Terminator's house because everything in here is beautifully designed and machined out of aluminium. And it's, <laughs> and it's incredibly, it looks incredibly heavy duty and with the stuff that you're producing obviously it, it is insane so we obviously have resin refill um, and we have a, we have a heater and we've got dual z's which have independent motors because i can see you've got leveling sensors on each side so that you can always get that perfect leveling every single time and you're right. not you're not worrying about adjusting tiny little screws all of the time and then you've actually thought about quality of life things like being able to properly drain off your build platform without having to dunk away all of that material that you lose every time you're just washing stuff that you didn't need to. Exactly. So talk to me a little bit about, I mean, and then obviously you've got Mike's favorite thing, which is the traffic light system on the side. <laughs> so that if you've got these in a farm, you know which ones are done and which ones are, you know, waiting and everything else. So that's brilliant. So talk to me a little bit about the engineering in here and, and, and what makes this machine special and different from others. Yeah. So the thing is that we 
we have this basic setup of the machine like 10 years. So we started up with the most compact machine with the biggest build plate. It's actually patented on the you know, dimension re regulation. Yep. So that was what we started with. We always had always everything made out of aluminum and stainless steel so that you really have a tough machine that will not you know, move or something on the table. It's more than 50 kilograms on this machine, only the stuff. Uh, then we have like uh, all CNC parts here for or custom parts. As you see, there's nothing yeah. just built from China or something. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. all machined in Germany. It's all by our own specification engineering. We also have our own custom PCB boards that we manufacture in Germany. Right. We have our own software that we do in Germany and our own slicer. Because at the time that we started 2013, there was yep. nothing. Yep. There was the B9 creator. There's a video on YouTube we can check yeah. where we <laughs> compete with the B9. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all this stuff. So then here are the improvements uh, regarding the tilt. That's all uh, because of our experience and customer feedback. Then customers requested a 400 millimeter height. We were the first to have that uh, being followed by others. Now they go back because most customers don't need it, but in the industrial it's needed. And that's our specific fix. So when you're dealing with large prints, one of the biggest issues you have is, is, is that the resin is viscous, right? So it will end up staying on your parts and a little, add a little bit of gravity to it and you'll be able to reclaim a surprising amount of resin where, that, that's just laying on the print bed that otherwise you would either scrape into the bin or you would end up losing or you would end up throwing into your IPA, which then pollutes your IPA and makes your whole workflow infinitely more complicated and quite a bit more costly because you're constantly refreshing all of that. I notice as well that you've got, um, you've got the world's most the world's most over-engineered curing cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the lights. Yeah. yeah. So, we've got a bomb-proof, <laughs> a bomb-proof curing cupboard. So again, bear in mind that we've got we've got shelves in here, which I'm assuming are removable and adjustable and everything right. else, and full 360-degree curing whenever you need it. You've got an insane amount of light strip in there, so you're producing a huge amount of UV. Absolutely. So. What's the curing time when you're putting parts in it's there? It's 50 it? minutes for the ultra high speed and it's only 30 minutes for like other materials. That's, uh, so it's, again, so bear in mind that it's difficult when you compare this to, in, to, 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 to consumer grade stuff because it, it isn't, right? And there's a very different, re there's, there's a lot of different reasons why this is the sort of engineered the way that it is. But if we were curing parts on a domestic machine, an hour at least, depending on depending on the material that you're using, and this is doing it in in half or a third of that time, um, and that impact to your workflow when you're working at a commercial level is huge. Trying to trying to uh, cure ceramic parts is one of the worst. I, I basically left it in there for like two days to try and get it to cure properly and thoroughly. And this will smash it out <laughs> in like 45 minutes. Yeah, so, it's crazy, isn't it? So obviously this is set up to be a farm piece of um, machinery, right? You're yeah, not, yeah, you you're can. To there have. are customers running 36 of those machines using more than 300 kilograms per month. They're yeah. putting out incredible amount of stuff. I show you just one example. What you can do if, if you invest 17 seconds, you get one of those. Because we print all this plate in only five minutes or this plate. So again, five minutes for a plate full of, of, of dental parts that under normal circumstances, I would expect to take, what, two hours, five yeah. hours, something on the, it's, along it's those the lines. the speed and the size of the build plate. You're talking about the ability now to have your client come into your, come into your dental surgery, get scanned, processed, put on the printer, they sit down for a coffee, and then, their, and then their molds are ready on demand. After that, five minutes, after they five got minutes. 20 molds. So 20 before patients. their coffee's you even cold. Can, you can't seed them as fast as you can print them. <laughs> Brilliant. So, okay, so let, let's move to material and, and yeah. have a conversation about what you guys are doing in that space. Yeah, let's go over here first. Yeah. yeah. So, material, almost as important as the machine. Yes. The machine is useless without it. So let's talk about what we've got here. Yeah, we got two different materials. Uh, we have a functional material, it's super rigid. We show you in a minute, there's an extra video on that one. 
where you can actually drive with the car on this stuff. It's double the strength and double the stiffness of an SLS PA12 part. So this is really strong material. You can it print very, very fast. These are 60 pieces printed in 29 seconds, but it gets better. You can have these standard Lego blocks printed in five seconds each. So again, we're talking a full build plate of Lego there. Seven minutes for the, seven minutes 25 for the full build plate. That comes out of five seconds apart, which is 85 parts. Insane. And the same goes here, you know, with 29 seconds per part, total 36 minute print. Now, these are obviously industrial grade parts and they're, they're industrial grade materials, but even if you were doing even if you were doing mass manufacturing of domestic grade stuff, if anything, you're just gonna be able to go faster. So this is, this is sort of limited by the material science because these are incredibly sturdy, strong, impact resistance resins with, with special properties and parameters. But if you were doing something that was say, for example, a jewelry casting resin, yes. then we're going even faster at that point to be able to produce multiple bespoke, unique parts right. in, a, in an insane, period of absolutely. time. Absolutely, absolutely. Brilliant. So let's take a look at some of the other material stuff we've got. Yeah. Great. So then we move on to some of the more specific materials that you've got. So here you've got ceramic for um, production ready casting. Yeah, take it. It's really great. Just get feeling. So it's so cold like ceramic, isn't it's, it? It's, I, so okay, so I, I, didn't really know a lot about ceramic parts until we came to the show um, today and I found that it's a new material that I love. <laughs> the finish on it is, it's as if this itself was casted. This is a production ready castable part. It is insane to me that this is where we're at already when MSLA technology or resin printing could, if you think about how mass manufacturing has worked up until this point, how new this really is. This material science really is yes. cutting edge yes. of, of the newest stuff that's now available to, to, to clients and consumers. So, and then we've got your elastom elastomers. Yes. So these are your flexible materials. So let's talk a little bit about some of these because these are also cool. Yeah, we work with a partner, LutraCat here to actually uh, do the designing, right? There are some hard shoe soles, yeah. and there are the soft ones, right? Uh, that are like in mesh, it's incredible. So they're different than short hardness. So for kids shoes, for example, if you need to pull around sneaker, you can do that with that material as well. It's yeah. really flexible, it's stiff enough for a shoe sole, just like you have it today. And these are, and again, these are almost no post-processing these are these are literally just come off the machine right you they go in the post your box that's part. it the only thing that the uh, heating is that here and that's it right the ceramics needs a special treatment but not a burnout or something it's yeah. a composite ceramic it's done quite quickly at i think 180 degree you can do it in your own oven even if you want that's just insane again the material science of what's available in these machines is just it's next level. We are, we, are, we, are, we are starting to see 3D printing coming into a place where it is a materially viable option for mass production, for, for engineering grade parts. That there's, sort of, there's an old saying that 3D printing can do anything, but it shouldn't do everything. And it's now very much moving towards the side to go, well, actually, yeah, now it, now it genuinely is a viable option at a mass production level. You're not just dealing with, you know, you're not just dealing with small, small parts or, yeah. or unique geometries that aren't possible in traditional manufacturing. You're now also dealing with material science that previously wasn't possible with the materials that, you, that were available to you before. Indeed, and also that we unlock the, 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 the issue that you always have. Some people use uh, 3D printing for insane engineering projects, and after they have one part made, they ask themselves, should I show it to the boss or not? Okay, I show it to the boss, and then says, I need like thousands of them. And they know, okay, I cannot produce thousands because I don't want to operate like 200 printers. And with that print speed, you can solve this problem pretty easily at a reasonable cost in record time. 
Workflow is something that's incredibly complicated to get the balance for. What you generally need for high workflow is a high amount of space, but high amount of space comes with a high amount of cost and they're very costly and, and they become costly to operate and maintain. You've got a larger property and everything else. So when you're dealing with very, very fast machines, you can reduce that overarching footprint that you need to mean that you can still produce the sheer amount of parts that you need but in such a smaller space. And when you're dealing with machines like this that are printing this fast, you are at, you are at the limits of where, of, of where the chemical science can actually take you. You're gonna to get to a stage where you're just boiling the resin. So it's, there's not much more speed that you can eke out of these without making real advancements in, in, in how that material is manufactured. And, and we're seeing that every day in new resins that are coming out, new things that are being developed. And it's really, really great to see. Thanks very much, Tim, for taking the time. Catch you on the next video.